It's amazing we're here to talk about Android's version 10. And we get to celebrate a milestone together. Today, there are over 2.5 billion active Android devices. And today, we want to walk you through what's coming next in Android Q. Innovation, security, and privacy, the central theme of the Q release, and digital well-being. A lot has changed since 1.0. Smartphones have evolved from an early vision to this integral tool in our lives. And they are incredibly helpful. Looking ahead, we see another big wave of innovation coming to make them even more helpful. Q shows Android shaping the leading edge of mobile innovation with over 180 device makers around the world. Driven by this powerful ecosystem, many innovations have been first on Android, from large screens to the first OLED display. And this year, Display technology will take an even bigger leap, with foldables coming from multiple Android OEMs. These devices open up a completely new category, which, though early, just might change the future of mobile computing. Foldables take advantage of a completely new display technology. They literally bend and fold from phone to tablet-sized screen. And Q maximizes what's possible on these screens. For instance, foldables are great for multitasking. So I can watch some funny videos my sister sent me while we chat about what we're going to do for my mom on Mother's Day. But the feature I'm most excited about is screen continuity. So let's say we finish chatting. It's time to head out, and I'm standing around waiting for my ride. So I start playing a game on the folded smaller screen. When I sit down and unfold, the game seamlessly transfers to the larger screen. It is so cool. And I can pick up exactly where I was playing. Now, multiple OEMs will launch foldables this year, all running Android. <laughs> Another exciting innovation is 5G. 5G networks mean consistently faster speeds with lower latency. So apps, and especially games, can target rich, immersive experiences to these 5G connected phones. And Android Q supports 5G natively. This year, more than 20 carriers will launch networks. And our OEMs have over a dozen 5G-ready phones all launching this year, and they'll all be running Android. Now, in addition to hardware innovation, we're also seeing huge firsts in software, driven by advances in on-device machine learning. Sundar showed live caption. Now, I would really like you to see it in action and then take you under the hood. Please welcome Tristan. Like many people, I watch videos without sound when I'm on the go. With captions, I can still keep up, even if I'm in a crowded space or I'm sitting in a meeting. So for me, they're super helpful. But for the almost 500 million people who are deaf or hard of hearing, captions are critical. Today, loads of mobile content embeds audio, from video to voice messages, and everything in between. Without captions, this content is nowhere near as accessible. Live caption in Q takes audio and instantly turns it into text. Let's take a look at this video my friend Heather sent me yesterday. To turn it on, I open the volume rocker and tap the live caption button. Hey, cutie. Do you want to give your puppy a hug? Oh, oh, I guess not. Puppy is walking away. <laughs> so as you can see, these captions appear in real time over a video that would normally never have captions. You can expand them, contract them, move them up and down. It's a lot of fun. But what makes this feature so incredible is that it's entirely done on device. In fact, it doesn't need to be connected to the internet at all. If we take a look. This entire demo I've done in airplane mode. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. OK, so how is this possible? It's because of a huge breakthrough in speech recognition that we made earlier this year. This once required streaming audio to the cloud to run a two gigabyte model for processing. Now we can do that same processing on device 
using a recurrent neural net in just 80 megabytes. The live speech model is running on the phone, and no audio stream ever leaves it. All this protects user privacy. And this is OS-wide, which means you get those captions in all your apps and in web content, too. Now, the same on-device machine learning powers another useful Q feature, which is Smart Reply. With Smart Reply, the OS helpfully suggests what you'll type next. It'll predict the text you'll type, even emoji. And it's a huge time saver. What's really cool is this works now for all messaging apps in Android. Like in Signal, you can see the OS providing these helpful suggestions. And Smart Reply can now even predict the actions that you'll take. So say a friend sends you an address. And normally, you'd copy and paste that into Maps. That's kind of a hassle. With Smart Reply, you just tap, and it will open for you. And all this is saving you time. On-device machine learning powers everything from these incredible breakthroughs like Live Caption to helpful everyday features like Smart Reply. And it does this with no user input ever leaving the phone, all of which protects user privacy. Now, there's one more addition to Android Q that's small, but you've been asking us about for a while. And that is Dark Theme. And we're launching it in Q. <laughs> so you can activate it by using the Quick Tile or by turning on Battery Saver. And in fact, it will help you save battery. Your OLED display is one of the most power-hungry components in your phone. So by lighting up less pixels, we'll save you battery. So that's innovation. But we feel all innovation must happen within a frame of security and privacy. People now carry phones constantly, and we trust them with a lot of personal information. You should always be in control of what you share and who you share it with. And that's why the central, second area we'll cover, and the central focus of the release, is security and privacy. Now, over the years, Android's built out a huge set of protections already. File-based encryption, SSL by default, secure DNS, work profiles, and many of these were first on Android. And Android has the most widely deployed security and anti-malware service of any OS, with Google Play Protect. It runs on every device, and it scans over 50 billion apps a day. In fact, in Gartner's 2019 security report, which was published this week, Android scored the highest possible rating in 26 out of 30 categories. It's ahead on multiple points, from authentication to network security to malware protection and more. At the same time, we wanted to go much further. And that's why Android Q includes almost 50 features focused on security and privacy, all providing more protection, transparency, and control. So first. In Q, we've brought privacy to the top level in settings. And there, you'll find a number of important controls all in one place. Activity data, location history, ad settings. And you decide what's on or off. Now, location is another place we've created tools for more transparency and control. Now, location can be really helpful, especially when you're lost in a new place. But it's also some of your most personal information. And you should, again, always be in control of who you share it with and how they can use it. So first, if you're wondering which apps can be accessing your location, we make it easy for you to know. With Q, your device will give you helpful reminders whenever an app accesses location when you're not actively using that app. So you can review and decide, do you want to continue sharing or not? Second, Q will give you more control over how you share location data with apps. For example, Say you want to get pizza delivered. You can choose to share your location only while the app is in use. And as soon as you close, you'll stop sharing location. Finally, what if you're wondering, what kind of location do all my apps have? In Q, we've brought location controls to the forefront in settings. So you can quickly review every app and change location access with simple controls. Now, there are many, many more enhancements to security and privacy throughout the OS, like TLS v3 encryption for low-end devices, randomizing your MAC address by default, and many more. And you can read about all of these in our blog post this week. But there's one more really big thing for security. Now, your Android device gets regular up security updates already, but you still have to wait for the release, and you have to reboot when they come. We want you to get these faster, even faster. 
And that's why in Q, we're making a set of OS modules updatable directly over the air. So now these can be updated individually as soon as they are available and without a reboot of the device. Now, this was a huge technical challenge. We're updating these in the background the same way we're updating Google Apps. It's easier for our partners with whom we're working closely, but more importantly, it's much better for you. You can learn more about this at the session, What's New in Android? Now, there's one more thing that's changed since the early days of Android. Now, people carry smartphones everywhere because they're really helpful. But we're also spending a lot of time on phones. And people tell us sometimes they wish they'd spent more time on other things. We want to help people find balance and digital well-being. And yes, sometimes this means making it easier to put your device away entirely and focus on the times that really matter. That's why last year, we launched digital well-being tools with dashboards, app timers, flip to shush, and wind down to help you set the phone down and get to sleep at night. And these tools are really helping. App timers helped users stick to their goals over 90% of the time. And users of Windown had a 27% drop in nighttime usage. If you're not using these already, I would really recommend them. But this year, we want to help even more with distraction. A lot of times, I just want to sit down and focus to get something done. And when I'm trying to do this, like working, maybe it's studying for you, I don't want email or anything else to distract me. And that's why we've created a new mode for Android. It's called Focus Mode. When I enter focus mode, I can select the apps that I find distracting. For me, that's email, the news. So now they're turned off, and I can really get to work. Those apps that distract me are disabled. But I can still keep text, because it's important to me that my family can always get a hold of me until I come out of focus mode. And then everything is back. Focus mode is coming to devices on P and Q this fall. Now, finally, I want to talk about families. For 84% of us parents, technology use by our kids is a top concern. In the US, the average age of kids getting phones is now eight. In Q, Family Link parental controls will be built right into the settings of the device. So when you set up a device for someone in your family, Family Link will help connect it to a parent. And you can review any apps that your child wants to install. After that, you can set daily screen time limits. You can check where are the apps where my kids are spending time. And you can set a device bedtime so your kids can disconnect and get to sleep. And now in Android Q, you can set time limits on specific apps. And when your child hits that device bedtime, if you want to give them just five more minutes, now we have bonus time. Now, there's a ton more in Q that we don't have time to cover, a ton. Everything from streaming media to hearing aids to better connectivity to new gesture UI and more. So today, I'm excited to announce that Q Beta 3 is available on 21 devices. That is 12 OEMs plus all pixels. And that is more than double last year. We hope you head over to the link to get it on your phone, because we would love to have you try it out. And now I will hand it over to Rick. Thank you very much. <laughs>